So the first project that we're going to uh, get the pleasure of seeing is The Future of Books, where physical books meet mixed reality, presented by the students from NYU. It is probably because of this book that I'm standing here today. My father read it to me while growing up, and I would like to read a little bit to you right now. What an astonishing thing a book is. One glance at it, and you're inside the mind of another person. Across the millennia, an author is speaking clearly and silently inside your head, directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding together people who never knew each other. Books break the shackles of time. A book is proof that humans are capable of working magic. Good afternoon, my name is Daniela. This is Scott, Alejandro, Kenzo, Cristobal, and JJ. Our group is exploring the future and potential of mixed reality and learning and reading experiences. We have designed and built a tool, a mixed reality tool, that will guide you through your reading and your learning experience. This tool will serve just as an expert human tutor might if they were able to pull up relevant information in real time, provide you with metacognitive resources, and guide you through your reading and learning while you prepare for, engage with, and wrap up a learning session. Certainly it is because of books, this magic window, this ultimate display, that at some point, together or individually, we developed an appreciation for learning and a sense of wonder. Today we're here thinking, can we use the technology of mixed reality to design our way to our own discoveries? So our group came together because of this shared passion for books, yet as millennials we also face this humbling reality, which is that our brains are losing the ability to focus for long periods of time. We have these endless two-dimensional browser tabs open in front of our eyeballs, and we expect information always at our fingertips. But one of the effects of this is that we're, our convergent thinking muscles are going soft. So these are the ones that help us to reflect and connect these different constellations of ideas that we pick up from our learning. One of the things about books that we really like is that they spatialize our learning. So as you read a book, you remember where things are on a page and where you were when you were reading it in ways that you don't with an e-reader. We love some of the capabilities of an e-reader, but there's never this sense of locatedness. It's this sort of continual stream of information. So the form of a book induces focus. So we know this to be true for ourselves, and we think it's true for other people as well. So we began our design research process by speaking with some professors from NYU. We talked with Jan Plas from Multimedia Education Design and Ken Perlin from Computer Science, and they really helped us zero in on a couple key, so key concepts for this project. One of those is meaning making. So that, again, is this idea that if you're better at connecting these different nodes of information from your learning interdisciplinarily, you'll have more success later when you try and recall them. And the other idea that's really central to this is comm technology design. One of those key ideas here is that if you give the user agency to bring things from the periphery of their experience to the center of their focus when they want to, they won't be dominated by the, the technology, and they'll be able to more effectively stay focused on reading. I am a book publisher. I run an art publishing company. So for me, this is a very personal subject. I love books, and I love to create them. Books are beautiful. They can be heirlooms, collector items, and our collections become a reflection of who we are. A study shows that the students don't connect emotionally with uh, on-screen text. Also, parents and children much prefer to read out loud to each other from physical books. And we, we see this to be true at the marketplace as well. Uh, last year, there was a 3.3% bump on printed book sales. Meanwhile, e-reader sales have been decreasing in the past two years. Uh, even that, uh, we, we do like the capabilities of uh, e-readers, and even that we don't like to read on them, we, want, we wanted features, and we want to bring them, bring them to the analog uh, experience. Mixed reality, mixed reality brings us the opportunity to create a tool that augment the experience of reading and learning from printed books. So for the purposes of this project, we decided to focus our user research on students and academics, um, those that have to consume large amounts of written content. And so we went to our university library to speak to NYU students and to observe uh, their reading and study habits and to figure out how we can improve them. Uh, here's some of what they had to say. 
I think it'd be nice if it was movable. You're working on the text and you're taking notes, like the text could be here and your notes could just be jotted down. I have a mind map that connects everything into, into a chart. So I think that would be like sort of like a coach that could like pace me and give me advice in terms of how to make my learning more efficient. Their comments manifested in these lo-fi prototypes of gestures, interfaces, and uh, features. Um, and it was important for us to create an experience that was, not only, uh, that was natural, cognitively immersive, and minimally invasive. And so using uh, what we learned from our uh, research on effective learning techniques and our user interviews, we landed on three key features. Uh, the first allows the reader to create multimedia notes um, and annotations that live both uh, in the cloud and virtually in the page and can be shared publicly and privately. Uh, the second uses eye tracking technology to provide the reader with analytics on their focus uh, after they've finished their reading. And the third, through optical character recognition and natural language processing, recognizes the contents on the page and provides the reader with personalized contextual information that relates to that topic so that they can gain a richer understanding of the subject matter. Um, we created a video that uh, brings to life some of the ideas. The interesting thing about digital technologies in general is they can be whatever we design them to be. We just have fallen into a kind of uh, paradigm of more is better and smaller bits of and pieces of information and more of them and faster is better. What is an alchemist? Great question. Alchemists believed that you could merge science and magic to purify, mature, and perfect certain objects. See if you can connect this concept to one of the characters from Romeo and Juliet that you read six months ago. Technology could allow us to reflect more. Technology could actually take away some of the burden of processing, maybe filter out what we shouldn't be dealing with, and then help us actually understand how we learn and uh, support our metacognition. So based on the research we did on the video concept we just showed you, we set up to build a working prototype. For this, we created four features. The first one uh, is visual recognition and contextualization, which allows you to overlay a digital book of the one you're currently watching at or staring at. Uh, you also can touch, grab, and put different objects uh, on your environment. Um, the, the third one uh, is spatial mapping, which allows you to overlay notes on top of books, and you can max, ma map more complex information in your environment too. Um, there's also a conversational interface where you can talk to your tutor for a more natural understanding of your uh, task and the ways you're dealing with it. Um, we also see um, this, uh, this tool working with the existing ecosystem of books already out there. So for us, uh, publishers can uh, add content to that tool uh, as well as the community because we really think that um, the community is really important in this kind of technologies. So some years ago, I inherited my grandmother's record collection. And I love pulling these off the shelf and putting them up to my face and smelling them and seeing the smudges and the scuffs on them. And when I listen to these songs, I think about what it was like for her to listen to these records. And I wonder what that meant to her. And it, it makes me think also, you know, when I look that she wrote her name on some of the covers, like that's a simple enough human addition to a physical object that I'll just never get rid of those records. And we thought that streaming might kill music. But of course, it didn't. It made us appreciate the physical object of the record. And we see that as a really analogous paradigm here with books. So today, we've shared with you this concept for a tool that will understand not only the books you've read, but the way your brain behaves while you're reading them. And we think, especially in the world we live in today, that has extraordinary implications for not just a deeper thinking you, but perhaps a more thoughtful society. We want to enchant these physical objects and these analog experiences that we already love. So, this is the future with books that we want, and we'd love to hear what you think about it. So thanks for having us. Wonderful. Now we'll open it up to some feedback from our panel. Hi, it's Tom Furness. Fantastic presentation and fantastic project. And something that resonates with me, in, in 1999, we were working on what is called a magic book technology, where things would pop out of the page, as you know, in, in 3D. But you've gone a lot further than that. One question I have, though, is you, you brought up this mind mapping thing to begin with, a way to structure 
perhaps provide some kind of spatial structure that we can remember uh, the content that may be fairly abstract or something like that. Now, in this process of um, your providing an annotation, uh, do you ha I didn't see where you actually had shown this mind mapping being implemented. Is there a way to do that? Thank you very much. Would you like to take that? I can take that. I think in the video you saw at some points where you had notes that were kind of scattered across um, when, when she was reading. Um, we might not have shown exactly how the, the, the interface with that is, but um, we see it working a lot like how you kind of work at a, at a, at a chalkboard or a whiteboard writing out notes um, and then being able to save that uh, within the page so that when you come back to it later then you have that kind of context that you built when you had the time to go through it earlier. Another thing that we have been working with and we would like to explore, certainly with the advancements of technology, is maybe creating the gestures that we normally use with a physical book, like doggy ears, for instance, mm -hmm. and having that as a, a way to store memories mm -hmm. with the augmented other digital layer. How about the idea of uh, providing uh, certainly additional content that is actually triggered by what you're reading in your book? So it's not just the book it's how bringing a whole digital world into the book so that you now can have a, a different level of experience than you would have just from reading. Well, this is certainly something we talked about a lot because there's this you know, visual playground that MR affords you, and we had to be really careful with that because we're not trying to distract you, and these interactions are not meant to excite your attention um, in that sort of way, perhaps. So we didn't want... Um, a Harry Potter newspaper, you know? We wanted to really induce focus and have it there when you need it. So we do think there's a ton of opportunity in the space of inviting publishers or other people to add ancillary content to some of these experiences. Um, we're just hesitant to go too far, maybe, with at least this stage into what those kind of multimedia additions would look like. We base our research mostly in the idea of calm technology and that mm -hmm. you could have the information in the periphery, in the center, and you can play around with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly all the cognitive research and neuroscience, they demonstrate that that's the way to go with this technology. And also, as Scott mentioned, it's about creating a knowledge together, which already happens in the book. You're already having conversations with the author. Great, thank you. Beautiful presentation and such an impactful and, and purposeful idea of using information into a knowledge and a very divine moment is becoming a beautiful concept. Um, but one of the, I think, questions I have in my mind, like, do you have any um, specific uh, pipeline about applying machine intelligence? Maybe applying machine learning for that specific case and maybe improve the quality of uh, recording and sorting later? Cool. Maybe I can take that. Uh, yes, for sure. Uh, for the demo, we just built like um, like in-house and not connected to any other services like uh, Microsoft Cognitive Services, for instance. But we're definitely going into a pipeline where we kind of want to introduce this kind of uh, technology, so we better understand what's uh, what the user is reading, and better like uh, map those readings with other readings too. So you can like be starting a book right now, but that also relates to another book maybe you read like six months ago. Um, so we are wanted to uh, we want to like uh, connect those two dots in a way that's meaningful for the user, and definitely like machine learning will will be perfectly for that. I'm so glad you guys mentioned eye tracking at least in passing. I think one of the fascinating things about eye tracking is that you can actually model exactly what people have read, right, and and actually build. Uh, you know, vast um, uh, uh, searchable indexes of what you've read over the long time period, which I think is a fascinating concept in its own right. Another really interesting thing about eye tracking is uh, this phenomenon of change blindness, uh, which you probably have seen. That in fact, you're quite unaware of a lot of different things going on in your environment, particularly your periphery. And that's that actually plugs right into your notion of a calm interface that you can you can introduce things in a, in a manner that does not distract the user. In fact, they're provably unaware of, of some of these changes if they're done correctly, particularly if they're engaged in the act of reading, which is a very cognitively demanding task. Anyway, I just, I, I just would leave you um, with some of, some of those ideas and also open uh, the, the floor up to comments about the things you would do with uh, eye tracking. We have time for one comment about eye tracking. <laughs> Um, I, I think the idea was we've read some studies where um, if 
obviously when, when you're reading and you don't understand something, you, your, uh, your gaze slows as you track across the words. Um, and so one first initial idea would be to kind of save that chunk for later to, my, to maybe uh, bring back up when you're finished reading so that you can study it over again and maybe something with the machine uh, learning can bring in some ancillary information about it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, critics. Thank you, NYU.